Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about and show deploying multi-site with multipod on the multi-site orchestrator. Okay, so there's some prerequisites that you need to be aware of. So we first added the ability to do multi-site with multipod in ACI 3.2 and later. Of course, all of your sites need to have at least one second generation spine, but it doesn't matter what leafs you have, all models are supported. And of course, we assume that you've already done the ACI bootstrap and basic fabric discovery, all of that done ahead of time. And of course, you've deployed your MSO cluster, it's powered on and it has basic IP reachability to all of your ACI sites. If you're not interested in multi-site with multi-pod, you just want to do plain straight up multi-site only, I would refer you to a video from my colleague Robert Burns who did an excellent uh, YouTube version called Deploying ACI Multi-Site from Scratch. Okay, let's take a quick look at my lab topology. So what we're looking at here is my site number one. It consists of two pods. I've already got multi-pod up and running and configured. I'm not going to show that here in this video, but if you're interested in what that setup looks like, I would refer you to my earlier uh, video series on the matter. What we're going to be moving to here is we're going to be adding site number two into the mix. And then of course, introducing the MSO and doing the configurations across both sites. So you should have some things prepared ahead of time. So if we look only for the moment at site number one, the good news here is we can use the existing IPN as our ISN. If that sounds confusing, don't worry. What that means is we don't have to change any of the configuration for multipod for multi-site to work. We do need to have a few IP addresses ready to go ahead of time. So a, a few of these fortunately already exist and are being used by multipod. Primarily the connection between the spines and the IPN that are running OSPF. We have a multipod data plane TEP that already exists as well as a control plane TEP. What we will need to add for the purposes of multi-site is a multicast TEP and a multi-site unicast TEP. Those are in red because we need to add them. I should also note that technically we can reuse some of the existing TEP addresses for our multi-site multicast TEP and our multi-site unicast TEP but it's generally recommended to give them a different IP if only to keep you know, mental awareness and differentiation when it comes time to troubleshoot. And I do, do need to remind you that all of these addresses that we talk about in all of this configuration need to be fully routable across the IPN slash ISN. Okay, let's quickly look at site number two by itself for just a moment. So in site number two, because this is a brand new site, it's never been configured before, we're going to need to do all of the configuration related to the multi-site aspect. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is set up the OSPF peering between the spines and the ISN. So we'll need to add that. Uh, we need to add the other TEP addresses uh, related to multipod won't being used, but for sake of completeness, we need to have them. And of course, all of the multi-site specific TEPs as well. So I strongly recommend that you put together your own cheat sheet ahead of time with all of your addresses and interfaces laid out. It'll make your life a lot easier when you get to configuration. So I do wanna point out that when you configure MSO, it will automatically discover and import any existing multipod configurations for you. So it's actually really, really easy. So anything in black here will be auto discovered. All of the things, the addresses that we will need to add are in red and we will tell the multi-site orchestrator about this and the MSO will then push the proper configs to all of the sites to complete everything that we need. For sake of quick reference, I wanted to just you know, give you an example of the connection between the spines and the ISN, standard IP, standard OSPF, uh, and this is just one of those interfaces between one of my spines. I didn't show the second interface. I have two spines running in site two, but it's effectively identical with different IPs. And of course, I don't have redundant ISN devices. Uh, so my example is really purely in a lab environment. Uh, yours might look a little bit different, but you'll have a connection between each spine and any ISN devices for redundancy. Okay, with that being said, let's go now to MSO and complete the configuration and enjoy our multi-site. So I'm gonna log into my multi-site orchestrator for the very first time. Don't forget that the default password for the very first time is admin, and the password is welcome, followed by an exclamation point, but the letter L is actually the one. Okay, so this is the screen that we see for the very first time when we log in. We can see our version with links to the configuration guide, etc. Uh, and some of the new features here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the very first thing that it asks you to do is change the default password, obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and fast forward the video. Okay, now that we've changed the password, the, very, the first thing that we wanna do is add our very first site. Now, this is my site number one that already has multipod up and running. 
Okay, the first thing that we're going to have to do is give it a little bit of basic information about the first site. Now, I've already filled in some information here, but basically you'll have to give it a name. You'll have to give it an IP address of the APIC that controls that particular site. And of course, read write credentials into that APIC and a site ID. What happens next is the MSO will go ahead and log into the very first site that you've just added uh, and give you some kind of general indication that it is actually connected. Now, the next thing that we're going to have to do is uh, click on this button called Configure Infra for the information in site number one. There are some general settings here. Uh, and if you watch Robert's video, he kind of mentions just, you know, leave the defaults. The defaults are good enough. So there's nothing for us to change here. Okay, now let's click into our first site. And this is what we see. Um, the first thing that we want to do here is we want to uh, toggle this switch from off to on so that we can actually enable this site for multi-site. Um, also notice uh, that MSO has gone out and collected some information already from APIC about my existing configuration. And it's pulled it in here. For example, my VGP ASN, uh, my layer three out uh, that's been used for multipod and any uh, policies or things that, that might be in use. Now, the only thing that we need to add here is our overlay multicast TEP. And if you remember from the cheat sheet, the address in my case was 11.11.11.25. You'll pick something appropriate for your environment. Now, the next thing we want to do is click down into the first pod and let's have a look. So the only thing it's asking for here is the overlay unicast tab. And if you hover over the little information uh, icon there, it's telling you I can use uh, an existing tab already uh, set up for multipod if you want uh, optionally. But in my particular case, I want to have a different one again, just to keep things uh, organized and separated if it comes time to troubleshoot. And if you recall from my cheat sheet, that address is 11.11.11.20. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click into the spine here in pod one and let's have a look. So notice also that uh, MSO has already pulled in some existing config and this happens to be the interface and address used between my spines and the first ISN device where we run uh, OSPF adjacency. It's already pulled that in so I don't have to do anything special. The only thing I want to do here is toggle BGP pairing on. You'll also notice that there a new field appears called BGP EVP and router ID. And if you hover over that, uh, you can see that, uh, again, I'm, I'm actually going to opt to use an existing address uh, that's in use for multipod that's set up as a loopback. So let's go ahead and just reuse that existing loopback. So we're going to have to uh, type it into the field. And now I'll quickly do the exact same steps for pod number two. Instead of using the existing multipod uh, unicast tab here, I'm going to put a unique one just like in pod one. And you got that from the cheat sheet and down into spine two. Notice it picked up the existing config. We'll turn BGP pairing on. We'll make this a route reflector. And in this case, we will choose to use the existing uh, loopback address in the spine in pod two, uh, which happens to be an all twos address. So we'll go ahead and enter that now. Now, at this point, I've entered all of this information, but I haven't yet deployed it. So it's now only configuration that sits on MSO. It, it hasn't yet been pushed to the APICs. But before we deploy, let's go ahead and have a look at what our APIC looks like before. And then we can take a look at what it looks like after we click the deploy button. Okay, so I'm logged into APIC and I'm in the tenant called Infra because that's where we build our multipod and multi-site connectivity. And I'm looking at the layer three out called multipod. And if you look here, we can see the router IDs uh, of 111 and 222 for each of the spines in one in pod one, one in pod two. Um, Please ignore these existing addresses down here in the BGP infra connectivity. Uh, the reason why I call that out is we will see some other addresses populate here. These addresses here are used for golf and are not in any way related to multi-site at this time. Scrolling down under protocol and under fabric external connection policies, let's go ahead and he head and see what we've got here. So this is my multipod setup and we can see my data plane taps and all of that kind of business. And notice in the column to the far right, the multi-site unicast data plane tap column is empty. But after we click deploy, we'll actually see some addresses populate there. So let's go back to MSO and click the deploy button and then come back to APIC and see what's changed. Okay, so back in MSO, all I'm going to do here is click the deploy button. And we can see an indication here that configuration was updated successfully. So let's go back to APIC and let's have a look and see what's changed. 
Okay, back in APIC, I'll just kind of go in the reverse order here. I'm still in the policies protocol of tenant infra and looking at the fabric external connection policy called default. And notice a couple of addresses have, have uh, uh, been added here automatically by MSO uh, according to the information that I input there. So APIC is automatically configured. So that completes the configuration of site one. Now we're gonna go back to MSO and we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna add site two into the mix and there's a couple more steps that I'll show you uh, that are worth viewing. So back in MSO, I'm at the, uh, at the sites level uh, view here and I'm just gonna click add site and I'm gonna do the exact same things uh, for site number two now. And I'll go ahead and pre-populate all this information here and fast forward the video. Okay, so I've populated all the information related to my site number two and I'll go ahead and click save. And now we'll go ahead and click into site number two and configure infra. Okay, just like site number one, uh, this is what we first see when we look at site two and we can see that uh, multi-site is not currently enabled. So that's the first thing that we'll do. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to the cheat sheet and we're going to have to input many of the same pieces of information but because we haven't done anything with rela relationship to a layer three out to connect to the ISN from site number two, we're gonna have to do a couple of more steps here. Let's quickly go back to the APIC that's controlling site number two. Um, I just wanna point out that I've already established the basic port configuration for connecting my spines to the ISN. This is standard ACI you know, front panel port connectivity. And I just wanna show you that I've created a profile called uh, M site spine interfaces. I've created an external routed domain. All of this stuff is getting ready uh, to then have MSO complete the multi-site related configurations, but I didn't want to confuse you. This uh, basic port connectivity is already done ahead of time. So back in MSO at the, at the site level, uh, we'll just go ahead and do the exact same steps that we did in site number one as it relates to multi-site specific TEP addresses. And if you remember from the cheat sheet, uh, this was the multicast TEP. Uh, notice it already pulled the BGP autonomous system number from the config. Um, but a couple of new steps we have to do here. Uh, we're going to have to uh, set up some of the basic parameters that OSPF will need to, to finish the layer three out connectivity. So in my case, it's going to be area zero. I'm gonna choose uh, an area type. In my case, it's regular, but you have some choices here and pick the one that's appropriate for you. Uh, and in terms of an external routed domain, uh, I don't have to create one because you can see it actually pulled the existing routed domain that I just showed you in APIC a moment before here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select there. And then of course it picked up some OSPF policies that I, I had built uh, already ahead of time or I can add a new policy. I'll, I'll just use the existing one. Okay, let's click down into the pod level here. And this is, uh, there's only a single pod here in this particular uh, site number two. Uh, so the information that we need to add here, add here, just like site number one, is the overlay unicast tip. And from the cheat sheet, that address is 33.20, and that's all we need to do there. Now, notice at the next level, I actually happen to have two spines in uh, this particular site number two, so we're going to have to configure each of those spines. So let's go ahead and click into the first spine and see what we see. Okay, the difference here is there is no layer three out uh, configuration in place because we've never done anything with this site before and it doesn't have multi-pod. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to tell MSO the addresses that it should use to set up this layer three out. And just like in site number one, we'll press deploy and all of this stuff will get pushed. So we're gonna click first on add port. And if you uh, remember from my cheat sheet, I believe the port ID was one slash 33. The address for spine number one is this. I have pre-configured the ISN ahead of time, uh, the other side of this connection, so to speak. So this is the address that the spine will, will use. Uh, and then the, the particular MTU, I'll just go ahead and pick, say, 9000 as a standard, and then select an OSPF policy. Um, yeah, so I think default will be good enough here, uh, and we'll say save. And here we're going to turn on BGP peering and we will make this a route reflector. Now we need a, a, a router ID for the spine number one in site number two. So going back to the cheat sheet, let's go ahead and pick that one up. And in this case, the address is three followed by all ones. Now let's actually go on to spine number two in site number two and configure that side almost identically, but with just slightly different addresses. Just like before, we'll go ahead and add the port and we'll put the exact same information. In my case, it's also identical 133 on spine number two. The address is this. 
The MTU is the same and I'll keep the default and we'll say save. And the last bit is turning on BGP peering and pulling a, uh, a router ID. Again, going back to the cheat sheet, we'll go ahead and input that information here. And in that case, it's this address there. So that completes uh, spine number two. Now, going back to the APIC that's controlling site number two, I just want to point out that there is currently no layer three out built. And if we go under policies protocol and look at the fabric external connection policies, there is nothing. Now, once we go back to MSO and click deploy, we'll see the things populate here. So let's go ahead and do that and then quickly come back to APIC and see what we see. So back in MSO, go ahead and click deploy for site number two. And we can see the configuration was updated successfully. Now, if we go back to the APIC that's controlling site number two, we can see that there is a policy here that MSO pushed um, and it pushed an unknown community. That's okay, that's particularly fine. But also notice that it added the multi-site unicast uh, data plane tap automatically into site number two. And then if we scroll up, we can actually see that it pushed a layer three out called Intersite. Uh, this was a name that it automatically chose uh, when it pushed uh, to. And notice the little icon there that shows that it was actually done by MSO. And clicking into the layer three out that's been created, we can go ahead and look at the policy that MSO pushed, particularly the logical node profiles. If we look here, we can actually see that it's assigned the router ID that we set in MSO. Uh, but also notice that it pre-populated pre the BGP infra peer connectivity so that we can actually update uh, endpoint availability across uh, the ISN now between sites. And that has been automatically populated. Now this is the APIC that's uh, running site two. Let's go ahead and see if anything changed on the APIC that's running site one. So this is the APIC that's running in site one. And notice a couple of addresses have been added here under the layer three out uh, that we're using here. And these are basically just the addresses of the spines that now live in site two. So at this point, we've actually established, um, you know, full connectivity between our sites across the ISN. And I'll end this video now because it's getting a little bit long. And in the next video, I'll actually show you uh, configuring tenants and stretching resources and things across uh, multiple sites. Thank you very much.